Greetings, beautiful. You are listening to Stepping into the Light with Julia Treat. That's me, your host, from juliatreat.com. Thank you so much for tuning in. I am so blessed to be able to share my stories, my words, my voice, my channeled messages with you. So thank you again for listening. Michael and I are currently traveling around Nashville. We are having a blast. We're visiting one of his daughters, and we have just had the best time ever. I have been doing my own personal deep diving work. I continue to all the time. And as I up-level, I call it up-leveling, whether you want to call it spiritually up-leveling or um, financially up-leveling, love up-leveling, like, doesn't matter. I call it spiritual up-leveling. And when I, when I use the term spiritual up-leveling, I may use it different than what other pe- the way that others use it. You know, I cannot stress enough that whatever it is you resonate and believe in, whatever you re- resonate with, believe in, um, drive with, vibe with, that's what it will mean for you. So for some people, spiritual up-leveling is... Um, I mean, I do know some people who say they're spiritual, spiritually up-leveling and they are like, how do I say it? Like um, decluttering their life, which what I mean, they're, they're kind of moving to a minimalist life. So they just don't need a lot of stuff or they don't feel like that's just part of their spiritual up-leveling. And I'm like, hallelujah for you. That's so cool that you are spiritually up-leveling the way that you want to. The way that I've been spiritually up-leveling is to rid myself of any limiting beliefs whatsoever, whether it has to do with money, with love, with health, vitality, with fun and excitement and travel and any bullshit stories. So one of the, the stories that I am currently rewriting, so I always say, find your limiting beliefs, your bullshit story. I mean, if that's what you love and what you, that's what you want your life to be like, if you're living it now, that's perfectly fine. But I'm going to point this out. I want to make this very clear. Turn up the volume if you can't hear me. <laughs> God is not asking you to get rid of anything. God is not expecting you to live a minimalist lifestyle. God doesn't expect you to live a billionaire lifestyle. God only wants you to be loved and feel loved. That's all that God wants. I run into people all the time and they still have the bullshit story that somehow there's some guilt inside for wanting things. So I have been up-leveling. I continue to, anytime anything comes up, I say, what is this really about? What is the underlying story here? There is a story always. And do I like this story? Because if I don't, I'm going to rewrite it. I'm going to reframe it the way that I want it to be, not the way that I think all of my listeners want it to be or my parents want it to be or God wants it to be. I'm going to do it the way that I want it to be. So I have been reframing my money story. I continue to as I up-level and... I have been going through this huge transformation, as so many of you know and have heard about, including the blonde hair, which I love. And so now I'm like, I need a completely new wardrobe. This wardrobe doesn't even match, I was going to say, my hair, but it doesn't match me anymore. It's not who I am. So I have been putting out to the universe that I want a completely new wardrobe. I have not been saying, hey, I want to find all these things on sale. That's not going to come out of my mouth. I'm not, I'm not going to tell universe something has to be on sale for me to get it. I'm just telling it that I want it. So I told the universe I want this new wardrobe. I want up level. I want, let's go upper scale. Um, again, that's what it, that's just the word coming up for me. So on this trip to Nashville, we drove around yesterday to find his daughter um, something to wear out. She wanted a new outfit, and I love going shopping in new cities and finding new things. And 
So we went to this, I looked online and found a spot that might fit her style or what she's looking for. And so we made our way down there. Now, we passed a shop, we got out and started walking, and we passed one little shop that had a bag. I love bags and purses. Oh, I really do. <laughs> I, I'm just, and it just can't be any purse. Like, I'm really, anyway, <laughs> we walked by a store, and there's a mannequin outside. And I told um, Maria and Michael, I said, oh, I would wear that top. I love that top, but I love that bag, and we're coming back to get this bag. So we went on, because the store that we were, you know, we originally looked up was right down the, the block. And so we made it down there. Maria found something. I actually found a new dress down there. And I was like, yes, like this is the new me. I love this style of dress. So we make it back to the shop where I saw the bag. And I walked inside. And lo and behold, the entire store is filled with all of the types of clothing. I'm going to say like boho type, bohemian, or flowy, or everything that I actually love now. And so the woman inside the store, you know, began, she saw that I was picking lots of pieces. I wasn't looking at price tags. I was just grabbing pieces. I don't have to look at the price tag. I'm not going to let that hinder me on whether or not I'm going to decide to buy something I absolutely love. All I'm doing is trying on things and telling the universe, I love this or I don't love this, and I'm not getting this. So as we started, and she you know, uh, Maria was trying on things. We just kind of started going crazy and find lots of things that we wanted to try. She said, well, would you ladies like some Chardonnay as you shop? And I looked at Maria and I was like, of course we w I said, I think I said something like, shall we partake? And I was like, yes, we would love that. So now we're shopping with wine in our hand. In my book, that's kind of up leveling from where I used to shop. So I said, Maria, why don't you, her father, who was already done shopping, uh, was waiting in the car for us in, in the air conditioning. It was super hot there. I said, why don't you text your father? See if he wants to come down and have some wine with us while we shop. I didn't ask the shopkeeper if it's okay, if she would share more wine. I just said, get your father in here if he wants some wine. So Michael came in. We're all three drinking wine now. Michael's sitting in her chair, just relaxing, and I'm trying on different outfits. So I end up buying, I think, anyway. And I am getting to <laughs> this whole thing. Do we connect with the same stuff? First of all, I got I to gotta tell you, you are connecting with the same universe I am. When I'm at this shop finding pieces that I'm just going to say are higher than I usually spend. I'm going to say higher than I used to spend. That's the new term. Higher than I used to spend. But once again, I'm not saying, hmm, well, that's that much. I'm not sure if I can, you know, do that. I'm just... Having her take, I'm like, I want this one, and she's going to put, she goes and hangs it on a rack. I don't like this one, but let me try that one. So I got probably five different things, um, outfits or tops. And then I ended up getting three or four pairs of new earrings. I need new earrings. I knew new everything. I got a bag. I mean, I just had a ball. So she comes over, and she's, um, you know, going through she has her list on her phone. That's where she like puts her orders in on her phone with her billing system. And she comes through and she's checking with me because it's a long list. And she's like this and this and this and this. And I'm saying yes, that and that. So everything, yes, lined up. And there's the total. So here's the fun. I know I, I giggled because you know you've up leveled if they're actually not even going to tell you the total in front of the people that you're with. I just thought that was so funny. And so I said, yes, you know, here's my card. Let's do this. So as this woman and I are talking, now, number one, I get the wink, yes, universe, you've been hearing me all along. Like, we did not scale back on this trip. We've done anything we wanted to. We've eaten whatever we wanted to. We drink whatever we wanted to. We did, it was not about we need to budget. We need to watch our pennies. Absolutely not. And I had no problem picking up a lot of the tabs because I'm in this flow, and it's coming back to me. And I know that, and I'm teaching them that. I'm teaching even Michael and Maria to believe in that. So as this woman's bagging up my clothes, she heard me say a couple of times to Maria, oh, this would be really cool in my new photo shoot. Because I am doing, I am gearing up to do a new photo shoot. Um, I'm just totally not the person I, I was when I, when I, 
you know, launched my first website. I need new photos with the new hair, but just the new me. And I need the, my website to reflect me. And so I said a few times, this would look good in the photo shoot. And so this woman's like, oh, you know, you keep mentioning the photo shoot. What do you do? Now, I have several people that I have taught and mentored to do what I do. And they are still scared to tell anyone. That will keep you from the abundance and prosperity that you could be receiving from your amazing gift. So she said, what do you do? And I said, I am a medium. And she said, oh my God, I love that. And goes into this whole story. Well, first she says, what do you think of the Long Island medium? I said, I love her. I think she's helping lots of people. She's making my job so much easier when I tell someone what I do. And she said, well, you know, are you just a medium? I was like, oh no, sister, there's so much more to it, but you know, to what I do, but I, I can't even explain what that is. And I said, you know, my best advice is that you listen to my podcast. It's free. And, or get a reading with me, just so you can understand what I do. So she starts telling me how she was a channeler when she was younger. She was a healer. She took all these courses, and she was naming them off one by one. I didn't know what half of them were. Because I truly believe, by the way, that our soul remembers all of this. It remembers how to heal. It remembers how to channel. We just have to, you know, remind it. We have to wake it up. That's all it is. We have to remind ourselves that you already know how to do this. If we say, like, this person has to attune me so that my DNA shifts and to be the divine channeler of the light, then that is, that's some kind of story that I'm not going to say about myself. I'm not going to say that anyone has to attune me to anything. I know, and I do teach Reiki, and I do attune people, but... I tell people in the class, I'm doing this because I'm reminding you of the amazing, miraculous healer that you, you already are. It's the only reason that you're in this class is because I just need to remind you of this. So this woman's saying I used to channel and I used to do tarot cards. She goes, did you ever do tarot cards? I go, no, I never jived with them. I didn't, they didn't. And I know why cards don't jive with me really. Um, because I don't need cards for anything. I don't need them to get a message. I don't need them to channel anything. And that's another thing that I teach others. You don't need cards. If you have that in your head, that story, that you need cards because that's the only way you're going to be able to receive or interpret messages, then that will be your reality. That's your reality if you believe that. So this woman, I said, she said, you know, I had to stop. I realized I wasn't protecting myself enough. I was tuning into some dark stuff, lots of dark stuff, and it was really attaching itself to me, and I had stuff attached, and it would go home with me, and I'm like, holy fuck, stop, stop, stop. I didn't say that. I said it in my head. I wanted to tell her that. But then she said, um, do you believe that can happen? You know, because she said she connected with entities. I, you know what? That word actually cracks me up. That is just a word that y'all have learned from someone. They call it an entity, and it's this demon or this dark and nasty and terrible evil thing. That's what an ent that's what that word means for you. When I look at when I think about an entity, I, I think of a little flake on my skin, like this little thing that's clung on. I'm just gonna flick it with my finger into the light. That's how powerful that thing is to me. That thing needs help going home, and I'm going to flick it right there. I'm going to get it into the light. So when that woman said, you know, how do you roll? Like, what do you connect with? I, I can't remember how she asked it. And I said, honey, we're all connecting with the same stuff. We're all connecting with the same stuff. You are just perceiving it differently. You are looking at it differently. You are believing it differently. You have different conditioning and programs and little, li I'm sorry, limiting stories and beliefs. You have your bullshit stories. I'm, I didn't say that, and I don't mean that. If that's the stories that she wants, cool. It's not bullshit. It's bullshit for me. But I said, you have your own stories that have created this scary thing for you, that this work is scary. And I told her, I said, I teach and mentor people like you all the time. I said, I get it. Somewhere along the lines, you 
learn that this could be scary or that you could tune into something bad or evil and that could shift everything and then you're not, it's not this beautiful light work or that these things, these entities or these demons can take you down and they can um, possess your body or whatever, like possess your mind, this craziness. I know I'm talking to some of you. <laughs> I never had any fear of it, ever, never, ever, ever. I always knew that God would show me what to do. God would show me the way, whether it was by his own guidance or the angels or guides or someone showing up on my path or someone giving me a message that they didn't understand was a, a validation for me. I always knew there was a way. So when this woman was bagging up my things and she said, well, I'm not scared of it anymore. And I said, oh, okay, so why aren't you doing it? And she was a beautiful soul. And if you're listening, hey, you are such a beautiful light, sister. I hope you, I know that you know that. I know that you realize that it's a beautiful thing. You have a beautiful, kind, and loving soul. But I want to speak to those of you who feel like either, I know this has been calling me, but I'm scared. Or I have this ability or this gift and I'm scared of, I mean, I don't ever want to do it and I want it to go away and I want to shut it down and put a lid on it and, bleh, you know, this is not what I want to do with my life. Just to open up to this, and I don't mean open up, I mean open into a new reality about it, what I call the truth, through God's eyes. That is just going to make your life so much easier. You don't have to run from it anymore. You don't have to hide. You don't have to leave the lights on. You don't have to make sure all the doors are shut and locked. And you don't have to hide under your blanket, like whatever we do to run and hide from it. You don't have to douse yourself with booze or drugs to shut it off. You don't have to pull away from people because you're, you've, you're quote unquote, taking on all their stuff, another story that you've created. I can't be around people because I'm drained. Mm, that's just because you believe that. I'm an empath, so I've just had troubles, you know, trouble surviving in this lifetime. Mm, that's another story. We are all connecting with the same stuff. It's not like I only connect with angels and Jesus and, and Mary and God's voice. And No, I connect with, stu I connect with souls that are stuck here, and I help them go home. I connect with fallen angels. I help them go home. It's a blessing. I don't get upset when they find me or show up. I say, thank you. Thank you. I would love to help you. Because if it was me in your shoes, I would hope to God you'd help me go home. Your gift, your awakening, your purpose, can be so fucking beautiful. If you have those stories going on, whether I'm not good enough at this, you connect one person with, hey, your dad's coming through, he's passed away, he's coming through, he's saying this, he's giving you this, anything, and it brings them that connection, you have just changed their life forever. That's priceless. One thing I help people step into that I mentor is that it is okay to be paid very, very well for what you do. And I, I usually say massively fucking well. Because this is, this is such, oh, such important work. So I like to have the money rolling in, lots of it because I like to take really good care of myself. I love to go on trips where I get to just laugh or sing or dance or see new places. I love to get massages from the best. I love to eat well. A chef is, on, is next on my list that I, will, I am calling in a chef. Because Michael and I are done, we're sick of cooking. <laughs> I never really liked it to begin with, to be honest. So, I hope this, you know, this podcast today is all about helping you realize we are all connecting with the same stuff. It is universe. It's universe. 
whether it's your manifesting, whatever is your manifesting, or it's connecting as a channeler and a healer. You know, I told that woman when she said, you know, I connected with dark stuff and I had to stop and I had to close it off and I had to walk away. And I said, she said, what do you, you know, what do you connect with? I said, honey, we're connecting with the same stuff. It's your perspective. It's what you believe. It's what you've been taught or told or read or heard that could happen. This bad stuff. It's bullshit. For those of you who are geared up, ready to enter into this realm as a channel or a medium and an angel intuitive in a, and just ready to just embrace your destiny, my weekend course is coming up July 14th and 15th. It is filling up. Several people are already in. I will put the link in the podcast. You can always call me. Um, I'll give you my my number you can call leave a message and say hey i went in on that course and i will call you back and take payment over the phone it is 444 dollars um, full pay which also gets you a special gift that i'm having made just for you something that i have myself so i'm having a gift made for you several are already in the time is now it's just it's just time oh by the way the, the hours of the course some people have asked me it is a live course with me online we will be live together the group and me face to face all of us seeing each other talking me teaching getting to know your soul siblings if you need to call me to make a reservation you know to make payment and get in it's um the number is 570-955-3594 Again, 570-955-3594. I don't have the sales page up. That's the only reason I'm giving you a number to call. Um, we're working on the sales page, but I wanted to throw this out there since some of you have been asking about it. So July 14th and 15th, yes. You can do it in the comfort of your home or wherever it is that you are. We'll be meeting together. Also, my Sedona retreat People are signing up. It is um, filling up, and it is in September, September 13th through the 17th. Time to get in that as well if you are on the fence. All right, my love. I will leave a, a, a link to sign up for the mediumship course in the description of this podcast. So you can always click on that. There'll be a full pay, 444, and there'll be a um, payment plan if you need that. The Sedona retreat, you do have to call me to get in. I'm not posting the sales page yet because my fear is that it would fill up so quickly and that people would be able to pay without me taking the link down before it filled up. So if you need, if you want to get in the retreat, the Sedona retreat, um, it is 570-955-3594. All right, I am sending massive love to you. God bless you. Mwah.